All right, let's create a new document with command or control and the letter N, or you can go to your file menu here and select new from here. All right, for the width, I'm going to do 1920, the height 1080. Now for the resolution, I wanna make sure it's set to 300. And that's because you're going to find with GIMP, when you're working with text, it's going to be much crisper versus a lower resolution. So even if I'm working on a document or a project that is going to be mostly for online use, I will still use a resolution of 300. And then when I'm ready to post it online, I will resize the canvas to the resolution of 72 PPI. We're gonna go up to image, select guides, new guide by percent. And by default, we have horizontal and 50%. So we click okay and then we get our guide or not. So it's not visible and why is that? Well, we need to go into the view menu here and select show guides to make it visible. Now we can go back up to image, guides, new guide, and select vertical for the vertical guide. Now we need to select our ellipse tool to make a circle selection that we can then convert to a path. So by default, I already have it selected because I used that tool last. Now, if you have a hard time making a selection on these tools, when you hover over them, it's going to disappear when you try to activate that particular tool or to select it. What you can do is you can click and hold down your left mouse button and that's going to allow you to make your selection. Now, if you have an older version of GIMP, you probably don't have these icons or these tools set up into different groups, different categories. I like this feature in GIMP because it makes the interface much cleaner versus having 30, 40 different tool icons here and trying to find that specific tool. They are grouped together in different categories. We can also resize the sidebar so that it's similar to Photoshop. So if you like this and you don't have it, upgrade to the latest version of GIMP. All right, now that I have my ellipse tool selected, I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna click and drag out. Now the other thing you need to do to make sure you have a perfect circle, because if you don't right now, you need to go to tool options to set it up. So you need to make sure you have fixed selected and then for the aspect ratio, you wanna make sure that's set to one to one, and then you'll get a perfect circle. So if you didn't, go ahead and deselect by going up to select and selecting none, set up your tool options and redo your circle. All right, we now need to convert this to a path so that we can add our text to it. So we're gonna go up to select and choose to path. Then I'm gonna come up to select again and choose none to deselect because we don't need it. But where's our circle? We don't have anything to wrap around our circle. We do, we just need to turn on the path so we can see it. So we need to go to our path tab here. And if you don't have that tab visible, go up to Windows Dockable Dialogs and scroll down to paths to show that particular panel. So here's our selection of our circle. That's the name of the path by default. And to turn it on, we're just gonna click right here on this first square, and that makes that path visible, and that's what that red circle is. All right, let's grab our text tool with the letter T, or from your toolbar right here. And then we're going to add our text for the top and the bottom in two different layers. So if I come over here to my tool options, I can actually set the default of the text that I'm going to begin typing out when I activate the tool. So for this project, I'm going to use a font called Oswald and I want Oswald Bold. So this is a free Google font. So if you wanna use the same font, go to google.fonts.com. They actually have six or 700 different fonts that you can check out as well. Next, I'm going to resize this from, I think 62 is too small, so let's try 100. And then the color, it doesn't really matter because when you create a path of text, it's going to be added as a transparency and not a solid color. And then we have to fill in the color after. So it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna use this blue color for now. And then I'm gonna click over here and begin typing out my first line of text in all caps, which is going to be wrap your text. Okay, hit your escape key to get out of that tool. You can grab another tool to get out of the text tool as well. 
I'm gonna press the letter M to get my move tool so I can just move this up and out of the way. So I can continue adding my next line with my text tool. I'm gonna to put it down here and let's put around a circle. All right, now I'm gonna come over here to my layers panel again to make sure that I have wrap your text selected. So I wanna work with this one first. I'm gonna move this up to the top as well by clicking on this icon. Now to add this text to this path, we're going to right click on this layer and select text along path and boom, there it is. The only problem is, like I mentioned before, it's set to transparency. So we need to fill it in with a color, but first we need to create a new layer so it can go into that layer. So we're gonna click right here to create a new layer. Let's call it wrap text and make sure you have fill width set to transparency. Click okay. Now we need to make a selection of this path. So we're gonna go up to select and choose from path. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my zoom tool here so I can zoom in so you can see that that is actually selected now. And then with our bucket fill tool, we can fill in our color of choice. So click on your foreground color here, choose any color. I'm just gonna stick with that color for now. And then I can click inside of the selection to automatically fill that selection. Then we can deselect because we don't need that selection anymore. So go to selection none or use your keyboard shortcut right here. All right, we have a red outline around the text. That's not actually part of the layer. It's actually the outline for the path. So to turn that off, we're gonna go to our path panel here and click on this icon right here to get rid of it. We can do the same thing with the selection here, but we need to see that as we're working. So we'll leave it right there. Okay, I'm gonna grab my zoom tool with the letter Z. I'm gonna hold down my control key so I can zoom out and if you take a look at your tool options, based on how I have my zoom tool set up, which is zoom in, it's going to zoom in by default. But if I use this keyboard shortcut right here, control, it's going to allow me to do the opposite. I'm gonna hold down my space bar so I can navigate around my document so I can see my other text here in the bottom left. And we need to do the exact same steps we just did for this text here. But actually, let's do this first. Let's rotate our text around the circle. So it's more on top versus to the right. So we're gonna grab our rotate tool, which is this icon right here. And the keyboard shortcut for that is shift plus R. All I have to do is click on this text and begin rotating left or right to add it exactly where I want it. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it right there and click rotate to apply that rotation. Now, if I want it perfectly even so that the W and the T line up down here on the bottom, I can drag out a guide and place it there. So I'm gonna click on my ruler here and drag out. If you don't see the ruler, go to view and then come down here and click on show rulers. So click, drag out, just kind of eyeball it right about there. And then with your rotate tool, since it's still selected, you can rotate it and align the W and the T accordingly. Click rotate and you're all set. Now we can work on the next one, a round circle. So we're gonna go to our layers panel here. We're going to select around a circle. I'm gonna turn off this one because we don't need that one anymore. And let's right click and select text along a path. And that doesn't look like anything like this content down here. And that's because we have the wrong path selected. So let's undo that with command or control and the letter C. We need to go to our path tool and make sure we have the correct path selected. So right now I have wrap your text selected. We really don't need this anymore, so we could delete it or just keep it turned off. That's up to you. I'm gonna leave it for now. And then I'm gonna select selection, back to layers, and right click and select text along path. So if I fill this in and begin rotating it, it's going to be upside down. So we need to fix that first. If we take a look at my final project here, it's not upside down. So how do we fix that? Well, we need to come over to our toolbar here and select our flip tool. So before we can use the flip tool, we need to undo this. So command or control and the letter Z or go up to edit and select undo path. 
Now with the flip tool selected, we need to click on this circle path. Once you click on it, nothing happens. But when we apply this text to the path, it should be right side up. So let's see if it worked. So right click and select text along a path. And there we go. It's now right side up. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. Let's call it a round circle. Transparency again, click OK. I'm going to use the same color. So all I need to do now is grab my bucket fill tool and add a selection from path or keyboard shortcut right here. All right. Now that I have all of that done, I can go ahead and click inside control shift a to deselect or up here in the menu, select none. All right, let's go back to our path panel here and turn that off and let's turn off this layer as well. We don't need that. Now we just need our rotate tool so we can rotate this content accordingly, enter or return. And we can actually move this guide down to align the A and the E. That is if you have pick a layer or guide selected. If you have moved the active layer, it's going to move the layer and not the guide. So make sure you have that selected. Click on the guide, drag it down. And then with the rotate tool again, I have to select that, click and rotate it. 